Don't chase what you want. Elevate your game until what you desire chases you. You might have seen this as a common Instagram meme, and whenever I've even reposted that statement as an Instagram meme, I see so many likes because I think so many different people relate to it. So, we're sitting here, Owen and Julien Blanc, gonna be talking to you right now on the topic of what it means to not just chase the person you want, the job that you want, the life situation that you want, and try to hope and pray that somebody who is ignoring you will finally give you the attention that you deserve, but instead to elevate who you are so that what you want chases you. The pattern goes, you get traumatized as a kid, and you learn, oftentimes in codependence for example, that you have to be perfect for people or to get them to like you in order to feel okay. And when everybody's being nice to you, whether it's a coworker, a boss, somebody who has an opportunity that you might want to chase, a significant other, opposite sex, whatever that happens to be for you, that there is going to cause you to let down your boundaries and chase their approval. And as you chase their approval, they oftentimes become more and more disrespectful of you. And the reason why is because people value that which they have to invest in, right? It's like they say you don't fall in love with the person, you fall in love with your investment in the person. And the pattern basically goes that you let your boundaries down to do anything that you can to please this person, they simply can't process it because again, people only value that which they have invested into. They, they, most human beings can't even process valuing something they didn't invest into. And then from there what you have is then in order to engage the person when they're not being, you know, feeding you back any good energy or at least not what would be fair, you have to let down your boundaries. Well, as you let down your boundaries, you're investing more in them. You're, you're just doubling down on them all the time, hmm. but your boundaries are down. And then what winds up happening is then they can traumatize you. They can pump you full of low vibration energy. They can put little traumas into you. They can disrespect you. And over time, you start to question your own worth. Well, here's the pattern. As you're questioning your own worth, you're fighting harder and harder to please these people whose who's, who's approval you want so desperately. And as with, the, with these boundaries down, they can pump you full of more low vibration energy. And before you know it, you don't even know who you are anymore. Now, the whole idea of build yourself up, elevate your game to what you want chases you, here's what happens. You put up a boundary, you say, you know what? If you're not gonna tr play fair, that, that's okay. You know, that's completely fine. No animosity whatsoever, totally cool. But I gotta do my thing too, it's okay. So you do your thing, you put up the boundary to that kind of behavior. And then what you do is, and here's the key, you use the opportunity cost. You use the opportunity cost of time, the time capital, emotional capital, mental capital, thought capital, energetic capital, you reallocate that into building yourself up. And here's the funny thing. If you're Hugh Hefner, do you think anyone's gonna be mean to you when you're at the, at the Playboy Mansion party? RIP, Hugh, classic dude. Do you think anyone's mean to Hugh Hefner at that party? No, they're gonna placate him. If he says, let's do stuff together, they're gonna do it. But do you, those same people that are being nice to Hugh Hefner, they're probably complete jerks to other people. So which one are you? If you if you can evolve into your fullest potential, pe those same people that treat you like dirt will be nice to you. It's not really the best way to live life. It's a little bit competitive, but it's also reality. You gotta be aware of it. The main key is your emotional health here. Are you staying emotionally healthy by having boundaries? And, and again, the allocation of time, energy, focus, any amount of time that you're spending dwelling on how to get someone to give you approval because you're traumatized, codependent, you need their approval, that same time could be spent building yourself up to where that person wants your approval. So you've gotta become aware of that and that's what that meme means. And so much of this, again, why do we pump things like transformation mastery? We talk about these concepts because the root of it typically is in that trauma and you're looking to others to somehow get through the day. Mm. Yeah, not just trauma in terms of you lowering your boundaries, but also a certain unconscious addiction to willing to repeat what that feels like, you know, to be taken advantage of, uh, people like pumping you with low vibration energy, that usually links back to some kind of event in your childhood, and there's this unconscious need to repeat that event. And people are always like, what, what do you mean? Like uh, uh, needing to repeat something that I don't like? Yes, you get hooked on it. You know, whatever you experience the most, and usually, again, it goes back to past trauma, you get hooked on that. So if you're, there's a pattern in your life of, say, people using you, or you chasing people, and people kind of taking advantage of that, that you're just always there for them, always putting yourself on a limb, like anything to do, like the little people pleaser, codependent person, there's a certain addiction to what that feels like. Like, you know right now that you're probably going a little too far, and people are taking advantage of that. Like, gun to the head, tell the truth, you know. You're like, yeah, you're right. 
know, in my relationship here with my friends, oh, with my boss, uh, my coworkers, I do go a little too far, but, and you have all your rationalizations, but gun to the head, you know, and there's a part of you that kind of likes it, that likes it, the chasing and even the disappointment that comes from it. There's a certain emotional addiction. So tuning into that and letting go of that addiction is key. And if you want to go deeper, as you said, like check out programs like Transformation Mastery, those teachings tell you exactly how to do so. But that is definitely one huge part of it. And the other big thing, when you assert that boundary and you're gonna feel it, you're like, you know what? Those people are taking advantage of me. I gotta assert that boundary, enough's enough. There's that part of you is like, ah, but now they're not gonna like me. They're gonna think differently of me. I won't get those little drops of approval and validation. And that's another thing you must let go of. That addiction to approval and validation, which also goes back to your childhood where you're conditioned in this way, where you believe that approval and validation is like oxygen. You know, you depend on whoever is raising you for survival and you interpret that as safety and security. If they approve of me, they won't abandon me and they'll still take care of me, provide me with food and shelter and I won't die. So you become hooked on this. This is what runs you. That need for approval and validation is disproportionate to what it should be. You yeah, know? what are you actually getting from these people whose approval you get? It's not proportion, this, this fixation or yeah. reactive energy is not proportionate to the benefits they offer you. You're you, you're gonna be good. Yeah, you're freaking out like, I'm gonna die if this one person doesn't approve all the time. That's not true. So you must process that and be okay with people disapproving of you, it's fine. You know, you're not meant to get along with everyone. You've been sold a lie, you've been conditioned on a lie. You must assert that boundary and put yourself first. And don't think that it's selfish either, because that's what we're taught. It's like, don't put yourself first, you little egocentric motherfucker. It's like, no, put yourself first. There is a point where being selfish becomes selfless. How? The more you give yourself love, and are selfish, at some point that love will overflow and help people. If you don't have anything to help people with, like if there's nothing there, I mean, what are you doing? You know, so assert that boundary, learn how to cultivate self-love, how to cultivate independence. And it can be scary, because like, well then I'm all alone, it's all on me. That's a process you have to go through. And then from there, you're gonna notice those same people and other people who are at a higher level chasing you and wanting to be around you and those relationships and your life situation will be much more beneficial for you. So a major resistance point that you might be feeling towards working on yourself, building yourself up rather than chasing everybody for their approval is that you feel like you're not helping them enough. Um, now, it depends what kind of person you are. If you're the kind of person who's more naturally selfish, this video might not even be that helpful to you because frankly, you're probably already working on yourself. You're like, I'm already doing that. I'm already super selfish. And if that's the case, we'd probably make almost a different video for you saying help other people more. May maybe care about their approval more. Maybe try to harmonize with your environment a little bit better and care more. We'd be giving that video, you know, spend more time yeah. auditing how you're this making other people feel. This is more for the codependent person. More for the codependent, less for the narcissist. So. If you're, if you're somebody though who, who struggles with this, who says, well, I love these people in my life and I care so much about their approval and I'm so frustrated that they won't, they won't you know, send me back that love and affection and, and, and goodwill. If you're somebody who's dealing with that, something that you might be dealing with, and I've certainly dealt with this, is this fear of letting them down or giving up on them. It's incredibly difficult to do. I can tell you, however, in my own life, I'd like, to, I'd like you to compare two different aspects of my life, okay? so. If I have somebody who's a fan, or if Julian has somebody who is a fan, and they see us on the street, and they say, oh, you know, how could I get help with how to quit smoking, or could I get help with my relationship situation, whatever. If you say something to that guy on the street, or if I say something to that guy on the street, he's probably writing it down hmm. and super, super appreciative for what he's hearing from you and he takes it incredibly seriously. So you're able to make an impact on that guy's life in two seconds. I've had guys walk up to me on the street and because they like my stuff, I can I can literally do like funny things, like just grab, like say they say I can't stop smoking. I just grab them by the head, I just look at them deep and I say, you're gonna stop. And they're like, oh, oh. I'm like, it's like fun for me to do this. You're gonna stop now. Swear to me, you will stop. And they're like, oh, oh. I'm like, this is the moment. Can you stop? They're like, yes, yeah. yes, I can stop. I'll see that guy. I, I, I get all my day. I forget what even happened. I just kind of laugh at it. I see that guy two, three years later. He's like, I quit that day. It changed my life. Two, one minute of my time. And I can make that kind of impact on helping that guy. Why? Because I built a social media channel. I built a following. I built myself up to my potential so they value my advice. Now, likewise, we talked about people value what they pay for. Look, if we do a free video, a lot of the comments under, under it are people complaining about it. We're giving it for free, they're complaining. Now say that we do a free seminar. At a free seminar, 
more people are going to be maybe writing stuff down, taking it seriously, but a lot, but still a lot of them will just leave. Some guys will even walk out halfway through. They'll leave halfway through a free seminar because they didn't invest in it. Then if we do say like a $300 event, People there take it way more seriously, but I'll tell you this, you do a thousand or two or three thousand dollar event, people will do anything. I mean, you could be like, you know, run through the streets going crazy. They're like, yes, yes, yes. And they'll just run and go do it because they paid the money to do it. Well, well I mean, look at that. Your best friends that you grew up with who don't care about your brand or mine, I can't influence them. I can't get them to do anything. Yeah. I can show them the best life in the world. They didn't pay me anything for it. They don't care. Familiarity breeds contempt. Say this with me. Familiarity breeds contempt. People will not, they, they're not having to invest in what you're bringing to the table. Or if you haven't built yourself up to your fullest potential, whatever it is, they don't care. So when you build yourself up to where people are investing in you, maybe time, like if they watch our videos, maybe money, like if they took a program, I, I know I'm able to make a thousand times bigger impact. Let me ask you a question. What would you value more? Hugh Hefner, if he was still alive, um, you know, coming up and hanging out with you, maybe for five minutes, what would be more memorable to you? Or maybe your, you know, your knuckle friend, your knucklehead friend, Joe Lunchbox, you know, spending days and days with you. You probably remember Hugh Hefner more. He built himself up. It's of more value to you. So when you make a choice to be a little bit more selfish, funny enough, it's actually selfless because now you can provide people with a better experience of you. And you'll see this even in, in relationships where a guy or a girl wants to attract a partner and it's a lot more meaningful to have an attractive partner. So when you work on becoming more attractive, you, you could actually be not even as good in the relationship, but they'll treat you better. Build yourself up. So anytime that someone's not treating you properly, chase them to a point, I guess. But at a certain point, when you can see that it's not helping the situation, take a pause, retract for a minute, and go back to working on yourself. If you had a, a breakup, a guy or a girl, you, had, you broke up with your partner, maybe, Take a minute, take a step back, start going to the gym, start hanging out with friends, start going and connecting with people, start living up to your potential. That person oftentimes sees that on social media, they beg back. Why is it? Because you, you, you didn't just chase them. Like a lot of time in a breakup, people are like, should I chase them back or work on myself? It's like, there's, there's, it seems like there's two paths. There's only one path. Even if you wanted them back, yeah. work on yourself, they'd be more likely to come back. That's almost the most classic example of don't chase what you want, build yourself up to what you want chases you. So that being the case, realize it is not selfish sometimes to be selfish. It actually provides a higher value experience to the people who you're interacting with. So really change your mindset from chasing to attracting. Don't pursue attract. Like write that down right now. Don't pursue attract. You trying to chase all these people is like chasing fish. You're chasing fish for real. They, they, they keep swimming away. What if you just stand still, the fish come to you. That's the only way to go about it. Invest in yourself. There's another famous saying, like you get what you deserve in life. If you, instead of chasing people you think are outside your league, people you don't deserve, work on yourself so it just naturally happens. You must take an indirect approach. That's the key. Don't go directly for it. Focus directly on you and indirectly, I mean, the results you get, the glory you get will be out of this world. So always ask yourself that question. Am I pursuing it or am I attracting it? And it still requires taking action. It doesn't mean like attracting it, attracting it. No, do the work, internal and external, but that's always the approach. How can I attract what I want as opposed to pursue and chase what I want? Every time you chase, it'll keep running away. You'll never get it. So if you're serious about stopping chasing people, you can try to do it from an external technique perspective and fix your chasing problem, but Ultimately, you're pushing against the inner energy because that inner energy is very much approval seeking and caring too much. And it's almost like you're kind of stuffing down a beach ball, preventing it from shooting up. That's why we focus on healing what's going on inside yourself because then having boundaries becomes natural. Doing the healthy thing becomes natural because really there's a sweet spot here between helping people and engaging with them, but doing so in a way that's healthy and that expresses self-love. You wanna be that guy with self-love who people value your presence and you gotta be really aware of that. You gotta ask yourself a lot of honest, hard questions. I've had to do that over many years. I gotta ask myself, I, I mean, I've had a lot of people that honestly really took advantage over the years and I gotta ask myself, why did I let that happen? Why do people think that that's okay? And I mean, part of it is because I do typically, typically tend to be very passive. So if they're kind of being really shitty, I'll kind of just let it go and they kind of know that. And I think I'm still okay with that. But also part of it is they know that within two seconds I would forgive anything. And I've had that for many, many years. And part of that for me even was saying, you know what? I'm gonna heal myself 
And as I worked to heal myself through the TM process, you know what I learned? I'm not gonna hold anything against anybody, but I've got great friends who I haven't spent time with. Maybe I haven't seen my kids enough. Maybe I haven't called my family. And instead, I'm gonna focus on them. So it's not that I stopped being, sharing love or sharing good energy, but I said, I'm gonna focus on the people who didn't act like that. I'm gonna, and again, it's like, if I have a YouTube video, I could just respond to everybody that made a critical comment and try to get the, you know, go with that like approval chasing mechanism, right? Because people, we have this tribal approval chasing mechanism where if one person doesn't like us, we tend to, we tend to focus our selective focus, our RAS, reticular activation system, we focus that on the one person who doesn't give approval, right? If you ever make a YouTube video, I promise you, you'll get 20 good comments, but your RAS, your selective focus, will hyper focus on the bad one. Keep the tribe happy, keep the tribe happy. It's like, no, no, no. Why don't you respond to the people who liked your video? Teach your audience that if you like the video, you get to interact with you. If they liked it, they get to interact with you. And if they're being a dick, they don't get to interact with you. Don't feed energy into people that aren't treating you in a way that is fair or equitable. And that doesn't mean to walk around in constant competition and comparison and, you know, is this fair, is that fair? Don't worry about all that. But rather, just realize that when you, when you do heal yourself, and you are able to move out of trauma and are able to elevate out of a predominant low vibration energy, you will naturally say, you know what? I wanna spend time with people who deserve my attention, who do care about me, and I wanna offer that value to them. So what it really comes down to is healing that trauma, learning how to love yourself, letting go of this addiction to just self-abuse, because that's really what it is. Chasing people who are taking advantage of you, people you're not meant to be with, and just staying in this perpetual state of pain is self-abuse. It's not self-love. You point. compromising who you are is self-abuse. You kidding yourself like, I'm doing the good thing. I'm doing the right thing. I'm helping them. You're hurting you. So learning how to love yourself again, letting go of what is keeping that self-hate alive. You know, I like what you said about that, by the way. It's um, just jumping in there. It's when the airplane mask come down, mm -hmm. you got to put it on yourself before you put it on somebody yep. else. That's what that got me thinking about. Yeah, definitely. We're just like, everyone else, everyone else. And then you're like, dying yeah. trying to put it in you're missing the faces <laughs> okay it's a lose-lose so work on yourself let go of all the self-hate let go of the trauma the addiction to that pain that whole codependency and that really you got to research it we're going to put out a lot more videos about this research codependency narcissism and your life will change that's going to go up people are going to give you so much more respect okay either that or else it's please Please like me. Little people We're pleaser. We're chasing you. We love you. Please. Or you can uh, respect yourself. We'll see you soon. Peace. This is Julian, and if you're someone who has social anxiety, you fear putting yourself out there, or you procrastinate, you put things off, you come up with excuses, or you're lost and you have no purpose in life, then pay very close attention because this scale of transformation is what has helped me change the lives of thousands of people around the world. Now, I wanna help you identify exactly where you're at and give you customized feedback and action steps to get you moving up fast. Don't be one of the people who just dabbles around in the dark trying to figure it out on their own, jump on a free call with myself or an expert from my team and let us help you. Just click the link below this video, tell us a little bit about yourself and we'll be reaching out very soon. Click the link right now and let's do this.